Okay, do you like mythology? And not just like Greek, Roman, Norse mythology, not just like the Western mythology. Do you want to explore Asian mythology? I have a book for you. Hi, I'm Deanna. I am a avid reader of folklore and mythology-based fiction, uh, as well as a writer of folklore and mythology-based fiction. I am also Filipino-Canadian, and that definitely inspires a lot of my work. And this book. So I picked it up because I wanted to read more Filipino mythology in fiction and not just in the encyclopedias and academic papers I have. And this is an award-winning, amazing graphic novel. It follows a group of students who were chosen by the gods to trap lost Aswangs or uh, essentially like different spirits and creatures who shouldn't belong in our world uh, back into the spirit realm from which they came. It goes through a whole host of different Filipino mythological creatures as well as the different gods and powers. And it's just, it's so rich and funny. <laughs> I'm not usually a graphic novel person, but this, this is art. Where's your scary boyfriend? Probably off doing scary boyfriend things. Mm -hmm. I never miss. I never, ever, ever, ever miss. December was a really good start to my book chronicling journey. I'm using my page as sort of an accountability check since I need to get through my physical TBR to stop buying so many books. Here are all the books I read in December. Yes, I only read six books, but that's not including any digital reads. I'm going to rank these by my least fave to the best of December. My one and only three star was a nonfiction read. Listen, it's not because I don't like nonfiction. I love random facts and info I can rattle off to unsuspecting strangers, okay? It's just that Sagrava vs. Fat Lava by Nick Nicholas Tremblay was so hyper-specific on the post-war German ceramics that it made me go neat instead of ooh so cool. You know, I liked it but I didn't like it. The difference is lowercase versus caps lock. Three stars. Next up is one of the books that probably make me very flustered if I was caught in public reading this and that is Queer Werewolves Destroy Capitalism by MJ Lyons. This book is an erotic, smutty, horniness is there and present. Look at the cover. Let's not act surprised about this knowledge. I rated it four stars because it delivered. When I saw this in the bookstore, I double taked like I was Mr. Darcy seeing Elizabeth for the first time. So much so, I walked out that store with it in my tote bag. I bought it and read it and I'm happy I added it to my library. It's fun, lighthearted, and just vibing type of book. Four stars. Paper Doll by Manahil Bandukwala was another four star read for me. Spoiler alert, I knew I liked it before I bought it because I am that person who reads the first 15 pages of the book to check out the writing style. A real sweet poetry book and look at the cover art. Chef's Kiss. Four stars. Next up is my only physical graphic novel read and it is the epitome of the magical girl trope. It's Zodiac Star Force by Kevin Panetta and Paulina Genosho. Vibrant, colorful, and filled to the brim with girl power and friendship it was visually pleasing to my eye. Much joy was sparked five stars. These next two books were my first and last read of the month, like a really nice metaphorical sandwich. First five stars is An Apprenticeship of the Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector. This book is originally in Portuguese and is about a primary school teacher that is rediscovering what it means to live life and feel pleasure. It's a literature book and a romantic drama. Loved it. Five stars. My last read of the month and my other five star was Persuasion by Jane Austen. It's slow at times but worth the read. That wraps up December. Has anyone read any of these books and what are your thoughts? Let's talk about whether you should read Prior of the Orange Tree or A Day of Fallen Night first. I promised you guys an FAQ video on A Day of Fallen Night, and by far the most frequently asked question was, which one do I read first? So here's the deal. The short answer is, whichever one you want. Um, they are 300 years apart in the timeline, so it's not like there's a huge, you have to know X before you can read Y thing going on here. However, if you really just need somebody to be like, read this one first, I will give you what Samantha Shannon says to do as the author, as the queen who knows everything, and then I'll give you my own recommendation based on having read them. So for the only opinion on this that truly matters, Samantha Shannon actually recommends reading A Day of Fallen Night before Priory. And then if you're having trouble with how dense the world building is within this book, go back and give Priory a shot, read that first, and then come back to A Day of Fallen Night and try it again. My own personal recommendation now having read both of them is that it kind of depends on the kind of fantasy that you like to read. If you like something really fast paced um, with a lot of plot going on, just a lot of things happening and you prefer something that like carries you along like that, I would start with Priory. And then once you're attached and you're like into that world, then read A Day of Fallen Night. If you're like something that is more dense, has more world building, has more rich lore, um, I would start with A Day of Fallen Night. A Day of Fallen Night is a denser read, so I get what she's saying where like if you find, you know, you're having trouble with A Day of Fallen Night, stop that one, read Priory, get attached to the world, and then go back to it, and I think maybe once you're more attached to it that's easier. I think that reading either one of them first 
is great. I think they are both incredibly well paced. I think the lore and the world building is great in both of them. It's definitely more prevalent and like denser in A Day of Fallen Night. But like I said, I think it comes down to what you personally want to read. Generally, my recommendation would be to read Priory first, but I think that's probably a bit of bias in that I read Priory first. So like, I'm perfectly happy having read Priory first, waiting a year, and then having read A Day of Fallen Night. There isn't really spoilers for A Day of Fallen Night in Priory the Orange Tree or vice versa, um, but in Priory there is a story told of a character from A Day of Fallen Night in kind of that sort of like, it's been 300 years but we still tell the story of this person and this thing that happened. And so you know like the climactic moment of somebody's life, but I really don't think it's that big a deal. Um, it really doesn't negate most of the story that you're still gonna read for this person in A Day of Fallen Night. And to be honest, I read Priory a year before I read Day of Fallen Night, so I didn't remember the thing and it was like a new experience. There's a little meandering bit of like, which one should you read first? Whichever one you feel like. You can read either of them, you can read both of them. Have fun. Got to Montauk on love. love my ass and my abs in the video Fuck from us, you ask me Style is my dick, 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 dick I have no kingdom, no dragons, no enemies to defeat, but for a few moments, for a few pages, I can pretend. If you are new to the fantasy genre or trying to read fantasy to begin with in 2023, here are five fast-paced, page-turning fantasy books that I recommend to get you into the genre. The first book I recommend is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowan Horse. This is inspired by civilizations in the pre-Columbian Americas. Multiple storylines are converging where they'll end up in the city of Tova for the solar eclipse, which is prophesized to be the start of the unbalancing of the world. The Final Strife by Sarah L. Irifi. This is a fantasy world where the color of your blood defines what station you are. Silo was raised to be part of a rebellion to shift the power from red bloods to blue bloods. But after watching her family get murdered, she now has to help her enemy do it instead. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. And this is about a like multiverse of different Londons. Red, gray, black, and white. And a magical war that's brewing. And it's so good. A Song of Blood and Stone by El Penelope is about a world divided by a mantle and there's magic users on one side, non-magic on the other side, but on the magic user side there's a tyrant called the True Father who sucks the magic out of the people. So you get to learn what happened, how the mantle came to exist, and it's amazing. A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark is a steampunk early 1900s murder mystery set in Cairo and it's essentially like Sherlock Holmes and Men in Black in one book, except instead of aliens, there's gin. And if you've watched this whole video and you're already a fantasy reader, what are some that you would suggest for first time readers? Kings have honor, soldiers have bravery, and poets have heart. But all I have is heart.
This is for the fantasy book girlies. I'm going to tell you a few series that stole my heart that are not Sarah J. Mass. So if you've read all of her books or you're just over the hype, um, these are for you. Okay, so first we have The Bridge Kingdom. There's two books. I like ripped through this series so quickly. It's so good. Um, enemies to lovers. The world is very fun. It's fey. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good series. Then we have the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy. This one, I believe there's four books, maybe five. Um, I didn't read the most recent one yet. Um, this series is really good. The first book, it was a little bit difficult for me to get into, but once I did, it, I just love the romance in it. Um, it's a slow burn, but when it gets there, it gets there good, yeah. Then we have the High Mountain Court. This series is super magical. Um, there's a witch and the romance and adventure in it is just so fun. I really liked the series. This one got me through a big Akatar hangover. Then of course we have Zodiac Academy, which is like your Harry Potter, Vampire Academy, all of that fun stuff wrapped into one. Um, definitely read Trigger Warnings. It's like pretty hard to read at first, kind of like a bully enemies to lovers romance. Um, it's really good though, super cheesy, but like just fills all of the holes that you're craving when you're reading a fantasy. It fills all the holes. Okay, then we have the Fae Chronicles. Um, this one's on Kindle Unlimited. I don't know if you can get the books anywhere else, but um, very, very spicy Fae series. Um, this one just is like right to the point, spice on like every page, um, but the plot is still good. So. If you like fantasy, give these ones a try. Um, trying to get people who only read SJM books to like get into the genre more. So these ones are really good starter books. So yeah, let me know what you think. Who carries a mighty sword? He will tear your city down. Oh, yeah.